Some say history is a river that flows endlessly. I say that history is a series of stories written by each person's experiences. Welcome to Stories, a history of Appalachia, one story at a time. Hello, podcast listeners, and welcome into this special Christmas Eve edition of Stories, a history of Appalachia. I'm Steve Gilley, along with Rod Mullins, and today we've got a really special kind of podcast, and this involves going back into the past and finding all those old newspapers that have letters to Santa, and we're going to share some of those with you from years gone by. This is going to be interesting because, you know, now I read the letters to, uh, it's not that I read them on a constant basis, but I read the letters to Santa now that's put in the paper when they do put them in the paper, and they're completely different from what they were 70, 80, and 100 years ago. They're not even close to what they were back in those days. I mean, this is like... Bring me an Xbox 360 now, you know, bring me an Xbox 360. And while you're at it, why don't you throw me in some of those uh, heated socks? You know, uh, no, it's completely different. Yeah, a much more innocent time. And let's get started with our first set of letters. These come from the Kingsport Times News, or actually the Kingsport Times. This is before the Times News, dated December 23rd, 1919. For Uncle Santa, about that, Uncle Santa. Dear Santa Claus, I am six years old. I go to school. I want you to bring me a sleeping doll with curly hair, a little store, a little iron and ironing board, a little tub and washboard, and a doll bed. Please don't think I'm asking for too much. Your loving little niece, Lois Cox. Is that not sweet? Yes, that is sweet. Very sweet. Our next letter, Steve, is a first call for Kitty. As the letter goes, Dear Santa, please bring me a dolly, a rattle, and a kitty for Christmas. Bring me all the other little folks a nice present, too. From Edith Mame Pyle of 619 Winola Avenue. This one's headed one more, Santa. Interesting. Dear Santa, please bring me a wagon and a teddy bear, a kitty and some candy and raisins. I'll be a good boy and go to bed early Christmas Eve. Don't forget all the other poor children. From William Robert Pyle Jr., also of 619 Winola Avenue. I guess that's Edith Mamie's uh, either little brother or big brother, don't you think? Must be. so, And I think both of them had their priorities straight. They wanted Santa to look out for the other folks and having them have nice presents as well. Oh, yeah. And very nice, too. Very nice. Yes. Well, now, Steve, we turn our attention to some letters from the Clinch Valley News from Tazewell, Virginia, from back in December of 1920. This letter is dated December 10th, 1920, and it's from Tazewell, Virginia. This letter is titled to Santa Claus. Dear Santa Claus, I have been examined at school. I weigh 73 pounds, am 54, one-half inches tall, 11 years old. I guess he was wanting Santa to really know what he looked like and how much he weighed. I want some nuts, candy, oranges, and a new sled. That's all I want. Wishing you a happy Christmas, Barney Kreger. And our next letter comes from a fellow by the name of Robert Kreger in Tazewell. I guess that might be Barney's brother. Anyway, Robert says, Dear Santa Claus, I will write to you and tell you what I want. I want a drum, a horn, nuts, candy, oranges, and a new wagon, and some little bells for my kitten or little dog. I am a good boy. I'm eight years old. I go to school every day. I go to Sunday school, too. Please don't forget me, Robert Krager. Well, here's another letter from December 10th, 1920. Dear Santa Claus, I will tell you what I want. I want a tool chest. I use my daddy's tools, and he don't like it sometimes. Bring me a sled and lots of candy and nuts. Wishing you a Merry Christmas from Thurman Krager. Oh, the Krager family all got in at the same time, didn't they? They must have. (laughs) On December 11th, 1920, that's the date of the next letter, also in Tazewell. Dear Santa Claus, I want a fountain pen, a box of nice paper, and lots of dolls' clothes. My stocking will be in the sitting room. Just make sure that Santa knows where he can leave all the loot, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, Merry Christmas, Daisy Litz. 
Well, the next one also comes from Taswell, December 11th, 1920. And I believe this comes from Daisy's sister, Ethel. I want a set of dishes, Santa Claus, a doll with curly hair, and will go to sleep, and a teddy bear with a, and a desk with a chair. You will find my stocking up on the Christmas tree. Happy Xmas, or Happy Christmas, Ethel Litz. Now, this next one's a little bit sad, but I, I do want to pass this on for you. This is from Shaver's Mill, Virginia, dated December 14th, 1920. It says, Dear Santa, I'm a little girl with black eyes and curly hair, and my mother is dead. I mean, she just came right out with it. And I live with my grandfather and grandmother. I want you to bring me a doll that will laugh and go to sleep. I also want a little set of dishes, a doll cradle, and some nuts and candy. Now, I will close wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Signed, Hildred Leedy. Hmm. Wow. Well, here's another one now. This one's from Shaver Mill in December 13th, 1920. Dear Old Santa, I am a little girl eight years old. I have curly hair and blue eyes. I want you to bring me for Christmas a doll that will go to sleep, a locket, candy, and other good things to eat. I must go. Vivian Leffel. Now, you know, a little while ago we said um, everything was much more innocent back then. People mm -hmm. didn't ask for a lot of stuff. Well, you know what, Rod? We were wrong. <laughs> okay, well, let's hear it. <laughs> Dear Santa Claus, I will write and tell you what I want for Christmas. Please bring me a gold wristwatch, a necklace, a ring, and then some candy, nuts, oranges, and figs. That's all. I wish you and everyone else a happy Christmas. Elizabeth Gillespie. She had real expensive taste. <laughs> well, she was just downright forward, wasn't she, about the whole thing? <laughs> and now, Steve, we go back to some letters from Kingsport, Tennessee, in the Kingsport Times from December 9th, 1920. Dear Santa Claus, I want you to bring me an engine and some nuts, some oranges, a pony, a house. And a little billy goat. <laughs> a house? That's what he said, a house and a little billy goat. Hmm, okay. Your little friend, Woodrow Webb. Oh, my goodness. He didn't okay. want much, did he? Uh, he? No, he didn't. He just put it on the line right there, and he wanted a little billy goat, too. Uh, well, I'm thinking the house thing, too. He can link up with that girl from over there in, near Taswell that wanted the diamonds, and, you know, they could probably have a good time. They might could. Who knows? Well, here's our next one. Uh, Dear Santa Claus, will you please bring me a wagon and a train and a tricycle, a gun, a little bank, a football, a little airplane, some storybooks, and a box of paints? Oh, and oranges, apples, nuts, and candy. Your little boy, Charles Keener, Kingsport, Tennessee. Well, here's a very short one this year. December 19th, 1920. Dear Santa Claus, I want a pony for Christmas and a gun, and that's all. Goodbye, James Gunther. You know, I know a lot of folks that probably would love to have a pony and a gun, and they don't necessarily be little boys, you know? Well, that's true. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, Kingsport, Tennessee. Dear Santa Claus, I am a good little boy, four years old. I want a teddy bear, storybook, candy, nuts, and fruit. And don't forget my baby brother, 15 months old. Goodbye and a Merry Christmas. Harry Gibson. Well, I like this next one too. My dear Santa Claus, already starting to butter the big man up. Mm -hmm. I am a little girl, five years old. Yeah, probably had a little bit of help from mom or dad on this one. I lived in the country last year, but you will find me this year at 562 Winola Avenue. Mm, definitely getting the point across. Please bring me a little stove, a little trunk, a little Cupid, a tricycle, house shoes, a little set of dishes, candy, oranges, fruit, and anything else you want to. Santa, don't forget the little poor boys and girls. Your little friend, Mabel George Patton. Oh, that is so sweet. Now, for our last letter, it's not so sweet. And for okay. this one, we're going to go to Big Stone Gap, Virginia to the Big Stone Gap Post for Wednesday, December 5th, 
1917. Dear Santa Claus, I will write you a letter to tell you what I want. I want you to bring me a drum that will make my pa sick and drive my mama crazy. <laughs> I want a train that will run around the room. I want a nice rubber ball to smash all into Flinders, the great big mirror in the hall, and lots and lots of other things. Master John G. Long. Wonder what ever <laughs> happened to Mr. John G. Long? Uh, sitting in the state pen. I don't <laughs> <laughs> He sounded like a destructive little feller back in those days, didn't he? Oh, indeed he did. Boy, I tell you what, I feel sorry for his mom and his pa. That's all I'm going to say. Well, you know, and and especially in this day and age, we move forward into the 21st century, you know, uh, Santa would probably be hit with some kind of lawsuit, too, for giving those kind of things out now, uh, unlike back in those days. So, Okay, and the I guess close out this special Christmas podcast, we have a poem. Now, Rod and I didn't write this poem. This was published in the Big Stone Gap Post, Wednesday, December 11th, 1912, and we wanted to share it with you, okay? It is simply entitled Santa Claus, and it goes like this. I used to watch for Santa Claus with childish faith sublime and listen in the snowy night to hear his sleigh bells chime. Beside the door on Christmas Eve, I put a truss of hay to feed the prancing, dancing steeds that sped him on his way. I pictured him a jolly man with beard of frosty white and cheeks so fat that when he laughed, they hid his eyes from sight. A heart that overflowed with love for little girls and boys and on the back a bulging pack brimful of gorgeous toys. If children of a larger growth could have a Christmas tree from father time, one gift alone would be enough for me. Let others take the gems and gold, and trifles light and vain, but give me back my belief in Santa Claus again. How about that, Rod? That's a nice poem. That is. Minna Irving was the one that penned that poem and was printed in the Post back in that time, 1912. It really just expresses some great thoughts, don't you think? Yes, it does. It says a lot, especially for the time, and it still says a lot even for today. It does indeed. And that wraps up our special Christmas podcast for you of stories, a history of Appalachia. We appreciate you listening. You can, of course, subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or on your favorite podcast app. We're on Facebook at Stories of Appalachia, and we're on Twitter at Story Appalachia. So until next time, we're going to say Merry Christmas to you and also have a Happy New Year. So long, everybody. <laughs>